Hello YouTube, this is Dragonheart, the Prince of Wales, and welcome to a podcast, episode 4 of the podcast, and today I am joined by... Rexus, or as usual. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> Hello, beautiful children of YouTube. So, as always, uh, the episodes for this episode will be in a playlist on both of our channels, and a link to Rexus Hall's channel is in the description of this video. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. So in this uh, week's episode, we will be talking about gamers and how they have influenced... Uh, well, YouTube. Sorry, YouTubers and how they have influenced gamers. Yeah, but next week we're going to be talking about licensed games. So in this episode, please put in the comment section, there, in the comment section down below uh, what you think about licensed games, whether they're good or bad, if you know any good licensed games out there, um, and, you know, just your general thoughts in the comment section below. Awesome. So, let's get cracking with this podcast before we before we cock things up like last week. <laughs> sure. Hopefully, Hopefully no tech problems. Yeah. That'd be great. Fingers crossed. My my balls are clenching as we speak. <laughs> okay, that's that's a very nice image we got there. You're welcome. Um, okay, so I think to begin with, we'll probably start with some of the big YouTubers um, that do reviews. So I think probably. Total Biscuit, probably a good place to start. Yeah, Total Biscuit. So you watch Total Biscuit? I watch Total Biscuit. I haven't been watching him for a... I, I've only recently started watching Total Biscuit um, because of certain reasons, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a very good question why I haven't, to be honest. Probably because I haven't been that much into reviews um, yeah. for a while. Like I, The first review I really got into was Angry Joe, and then from there I sort of seen, oh, actually, reviews are pretty good and not that... Uh, terrible to watch um but i think that reviewers are some of the top youtubers out there who have direct influence on the gaming uh industry because of course uh if a game is badly reviewed by them all their viewers or a vast majority of their viewers aren't going to uh like uh the, or aren't going to get the game if they say it's a shit game and probably are if it's a good game yeah yeah i agree um total biscuit i I am I'm the same as you. I haven't really watched him long term. It's only within the last kind of eight, nine, ten months. Yeah. I really enjoy his WTF is series. I think that's a fantastic um, series on YouTube for reviews. But I don't think I don't think he actually calls them a review, does he? He says they're more of a first impression. Yeah, it's a first impression. Yeah. But why I like what he does in his videos, though, he actually brings up the option menus at the start and he actually goes through what options there are so you'll say like what hardware um it runs on uh whether your graphics card would be capable of playing this game what sliders there are and he, you know he actually he'd be totally yeah, honest well, you know toll biscuit is one of the best uh reviews when it comes to well he basically only does pc gaming and yeah. pc reviews so it's great because a lot of games are ported or uh, multi-platform, so they're originally conceived to be on a console and then uh, subsequently ported to the PC. So that's one of the one of the best things about that. And going through the options is like, yeah, this is a port, so let's see if the options menu are actually good. While well, this slide is a pile of shit because <laughs> this is like, yeah, that's actually true. So he, he does go whether it's a good port or a bad port, and that is something that's really nice. Yeah. Um, just trying to think now. Uh, Angry Joe. That's another YouTuber that I really enjoy. I was actually watching Angry Joe before I got into Total Biscuit. And awesome. what I think, the thing is, what I like with Angry Joe, and I like them both, okay, but I like them for different reasons. Yeah. Uh, Total Biscuit is more informative, it's more of a kind of a critique on, you know, a first impression. Whereas Angry Joe, he'll get a webcam, not a webcam, uh, a green screen. You know, he'll, he'll put on a performance, he'll, yeah. he'll put some comedy into it as well and make a show, but he'll also give his honest opinion. But yeah. also as well, Angry Joe, I, I would say, is probably the best one for console gaming. I think yeah, I think he does own both. The, yeah, yeah. The well, mainstream. yeah. Angry Joe does do both. Um, TB does um, just PC. Yeah. And I think Angry Joe, because TB is is first impression. What the fuck is? Is definitely first impressions. It's within the first three days or something. He'll put it out. Angry Joe is a big review. It's something that he's he's played through the game fully. Um, he usually plays the game on a live stream and live streams it and then puts footage of that live stream 
mostly like if it's got bugs, he'll put bugs that he's played through on the live stream on into his review just to show and back up his arguments in the actual main review, which he does do as a performance, which is one of the best things. Oh ever. yeah, yeah. One of the things I'm disappointed with with Angry Joe though is that, especially in 2014, I think he averaged something like one review per month. Yeah, but I think that's more to do with the kind of YouTube crackdown on copyright. Yeah, definitely. I think yeah. he's had to be a lot more careful. Yeah, than in the previous years because two, in 2013, when the copyright things hit, like all his videos got copyrighted pretty much. Yeah, he, I can remember he had, he had to actually only pick two. He couldn't do three out of fear that they would come back and he'd have three yeah. strikes. So yeah, yeah, it's a it's a tricky situation for him. Yeah, but. so he was, and it, I remember watching his uh, his video explaining to all his subscribers what was going on and he was practically in tears yeah it was it was heart wrenching to see that uh, i think that's a good that's a good thing to talk about actually when when gaming when the gaming industry hits back at youtubers oh yeah for this because um it's something that all of us are scared of the the, the copyright strikes for copyright yeah and um i feel like I feel like the terms of YouTube and the terms between gamers and and YouTubers, like the gaming company who doesn't mind YouTubers taking content and playing through it as a YouTube thing, I think there needs to be more, it needs to be way clearer. Yeah. Because a lot of the time when I play a game and I'm like, being a small YouTuber, you don't really have that much fear because you're not going to get that much uh publicity and stuff from you doing a, a a game and playing through it so i can do it with almost no fear that i'm going to get copyrighted for it but big youtubers have to decide like whether it's worth playing through a game to get more subs get their money at the end of the month and stuff and if it's going to give them a copyright strike which would ruin their livelihood because it's just something that is a big fear in YouTubers. Yeah. One of the things I like with Total War is that it's actually clear on their website. Yeah. You know, and all you've got to do is email them, put your channel name, uh, yeah. your details, your address, contact number, and then within 30 days they get back to you and it's like, yeah, you can you can actually monetize this. We actually don't mind. All you need to do yeah. is put in the description our our website, basically. And I wish more... Games yeah, I wish like I wish it was a lot clearer. Yeah. Um, one of the one of the things that um, NerdCube, who we're going to talk about later, put in because he makes games now, um, and one of the first things he did on on his game is put on the screen, you can use you can monetize your videos uh, if you're going to do a let's play of this game, like straight off the bat. And I think that should be at the at the beginning of every game, or it should be within the credits or within the options somewhere, somewhere which. The person playing the game can see that they are allowed to use content within the game to make videos. Yeah, yeah, it should be more like that. I mean, oh, it's just such a difficult, difficult, difficult thing. YouTube. Yeah, you know, I think one of the when you look at uh, last year, twenty, well, not twenty fourteen, twenty thirteen, two years ago now, very, very twenty fifteen. <laughs> um, uh, the um, one of the big big upsets was that change in the copyright yeah thing. but one of the biggest ones was nintendo because every single thing oh, that yeah. was nintendo base was just taken it, was like copyright straight away they just fucked everyone over didn't they i remember just that fucked absolutely everyone over and they are better now yeah. they have they have learned from their mistake they were i think nintendo got a huge like fear of going bankrupt last year yeah, and in 2013, <laughs> and no, in 2013, and then in last year in 2014, they kind of with the release of a lot of good games for their Wii U and for the 3DS and stuff, they kind of got back into the up and it's like actually no, maybe not, we shouldn't do that. And um, I see a lot lately, especially with um, Smosh Games. Oh uh, yeah, so Smosh has a game website, uh, as a gaming YouTube channel, and they do a lot and a lot of Nintendo games. They had a Nintendo dude, uh, the guy who. Basically, created Mario was on the yeah we, did a video with them yeah. um, last week, and I watched that. And it's just like Nintendo have completely gone the other way now yeah. and seen actually YouTube is really helpful for helping <laughs> our games along. <laughs> I guess you could say Nintendo pulled the Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, I, I can I can actually picture the head of Nintendo walking around the office in a Darth Vader outfit. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so I think that pretty much covers the the copyright thing. I mean, yeah. I just wish. I think mean, to clarify, I just wish things were were easier. If 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 everybody could sing from the same hymn sheet, I think that the would... worst part of the copyright issue isn't because the thing is, it's not just companies that can do it. It's people pretending to be those yeah, companies. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's one of the big issues of the copyright thing. Because sometimes it's like. Like I've got a few videos that have been uh, copyright claimed. Uh, these are my Civ Five, some of my Civ Five multiplayer videos. Yeah. But the thing is, they copyrighted parts of the videos where there is silence. Yeah. And it just shows you like what? Why are you what? <laughs> Makes no sense no. whatsoever. And I just feel like like I Fraxis wouldn't copyright that. For, like why would you even copyright just the silence bit? <laughs> as well it's really strange i just think that it's a youtube's fault not the youtuber's fault and sometimes not even the gaming company's fault no. or sometimes gaming companies are part of wank yeah <laughs> i think they should have some sort of verification process where if you're mm. for example if you're now a youtuber and i'm a games company and you're using one of my games then there should be some sort of code that you know i can prove that i am the actual games company and the owner of the content rather than yeah, any you random should, person just should, you should be able to that yeah it, it shouldn't be because a lot of the thing a lot of the youtube copyright stuff is towards the youtuber rather than the games company themselves who are claiming it yeah so i mean i could go out there pretend to be uh microsoft and just like do some copyright claims somewhere <laughs> like why would i even is stupid it's, um yeah it's actually this youtuber that i'm subscribed to uh He's got just over a thousand subscribers. Okay, I mention this because we're on about it at the moment. His name is the Luba Force Network. Um, I doubt you've probably heard of him, uh, but he does a variety of different content. He does. Uh, he's done some. He's done some Empire Total War. He's, he's done. A, he's done Victoria. Um, anyway, that's a, that's that's a, that's not the point. The point is that he actually uploaded three videos that were from the Ogs cast. Okay. But he didn't do any voiceovers. He didn't do any. He didn't. He didn't basically make the content his own. He uploaded it straight from yeah. from their live streams. I think it was. He monetized them, and he's actually one of them has actually blew up and has got over two hundred thousand views. It's yeah. it's called. Uh, I think it's Yogg's Cash Shin sings Let It Go. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, he doesn't own the content. He's monetized yeah. it. And yeah. he's now made a video in, in a vlog saying how much he's earned. He's actually disclosed it in the video. Yeah. And he's now going to buy a Blue Yeti. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? That's, that's, <laughs> the last copyright gone the other way. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. completely bullshit. <laughs> I'm going to have to show you the channel. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to link you the channel after because yeah, I couldn't that's... believe it. But he actually mentioned it. He actually disclosed it. And he's disclosed it on Twitter as well. So he could easily get caught out. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. very... And he hasn't got he hasn't got permission because somebody actually left a comment on his channel and said, "Look, you know, I don't want to be that guy, but you can't actually legally upload this without permission." And he's like, "Oh well, you know, unless unless the August cast contact me, then it's going to stay up." <laughs> Jesus, I know, playing with fire. I know that's um, yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. My opinion <laughs> on that matter are incredibly like that guy is a cunt. <laughs> Yeah, he's only 17. Like, he might be, like, yeah, sure, he might be a, a nice guy and all that, but doing that is cunty, yeah, and, yeah. like, should be done. that's someone's content that has just been stolen. That's like me going into a cinema, recording a the the Hobbit on my camcorder. Exactly, yeah, exactly. It's exactly the same. Yeah, it is rather cunty. <laughs> so, but, yeah, but anyway, I am... But, yeah, that's completely opposite, yeah. There's, there's one more but thing. It could be that the Yogscast don't have that, you know they don't have enough yeah. money to pay this guy to watch YouTube videos, um, <laughs> to to make sure that their content isn't. Yeah, there's one more thing I'd like to add to that though. He got that video up, two hundred thousand views. Yeah. The following week, he uploaded two more Yogscast videos. <laughs> yeah, and they both got. I think one of them got like five thousand views, and the other one got like three thousand. Yeah. And he's monetized them, and he's got away with it again. Which I don't quite understand because he's, he's definitely not. He definitely doesn't have permission. So no, he doesn't. Well, I mean, you know, get away with it once. Yes. Yeah. Going, you. Yeah. His channel will probably get taken down. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, actually, a, a lot of um, we've gone off the topic. We, we have. I was going to go into a complete <laughs> different topic then. I was going to go into YouTubers getting uh, fucked by YouTube, but 
this isn't the topic. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, we kind of reversed it. Let's move, let's move slightly away from all that monetizing bullshit, which is bullshit. <laughs> we might talk about that in a different podcast. Yeah. That's a good uh, thing. Yeah, that'd be a pretty good one. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I was enjoying that as well. <laughs> YouTubers, I was. I was enjoying that yeah. as well, yeah. Um, YouTubers and gaming. So let's... We talked about reviewers. Yes. Um, let's talk about how reviews influence gaming. Because we, we've told... We've uh, explained that who they are, that they've got a lot of uh, influence on, on, the, on the people watching them and how they get doing this with uh, Toll Biscuit being a PC version, uh, PC orientated first impressions, showing that first impressions is a way of uh, reviewing, and then Angry Joe uh, doing a, a lot more work into, well, I say a lot more work, different kind of work into his reviews, doing long term things with some uh, set pieces and sexy. Uh, <laughs> costume design and other things like that. Ooh, yeah. Um, but there is a third one, of course. There are gaming companies or gaming review companies, yeah. like uh, IGN yeah. or oh, PC Gamer. Shit, here we go. <laughs> um, who also do reviews. Yeah. Uh, but they do them pre, uh, pre yeah. most of the time uh, yeah. to get the hype going or just to say what they said. Um, so... One of the points that we came up with, me and Dragonheart, before this, uh, while we were going through what we were talking about, is that IGN are twats. Yeah. No, actually, they're cunts. <laughs> oh, okay. we're going to up their status yeah. of shittiness into cunts. Level cunt, yeah. Um, <laughs> because, um, especially recently, there's been a lot of discussion over gaming companies giving money to YouTubers or reviewers and review company to, you know, okay, if I give you this X amount of money, you now need to say that this is good. Yeah. Okay. IGN. <laughs> um, okay, this is 8.7. Yeah, it doesn't... What the fuck is that number mean? <laughs> right, yeah. It's, okay, let's start from the beginning. IGN, okay? I subscribe to them... Oh, my God. They've been on forever, haven't they? About three, four years ago, at least. Um, I used to really enjoy them. I, I used to go by their reviews. They used to be pretty good pretty honest and usually when i played a game it would reflect what was said in the review kind of well, i'd say probably the last 18 months to two years they have just gone complete knobhead because their reviews what justifies a game being 8.6 or an 8.7 i mean what makes 0.1 difference in a game now okay fair enough some reviewers will go 8 8.5 9 i can see yeah. i can see a game being between an 8 and a 9 but yeah, i can't because see... it's like it's it's like saying it's it's good but it's not quite enough that to be an 8 yeah but it's not that good to be a 9 but it's too good to be an 8 <laughs> that makes sense but say like 7.2 or 7.1 yeah <laughs> just and what i found as well not as well as the score that they give the actual points that they make is stupid. Like, like you, we mentioned before we before we went uh, to record this, we mentioned the new Pokemon game, didn't we? Yeah. Um, what oh was... yeah, yeah, yeah. The um the the I, when IGN reviewed um the new Pokemon game, the remix of the third generation Alpha Ruby and Omega Sapphire, um it w- it was reviewed seven point one, and one of the cons on the main argument. So when you look at an IGN review, you have the score, and then on the right you have the pros and the cons. And in the cons, you had too much water. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> how is that even? How is that even a con? Yeah. Like, I understand if you don't like the fact that there's a lot of surfing in game to do, which means you know you ride on water. There's a lot of Pokemon battles on water, and this can get annoying. But to the point where it's now a con because there's too much water. If I played through the game and I thought there was it was simple. It was just the same amount of water as in any game. <laughs> you know, it's a Pokemon game. You've got to have water somewhere because yeah. of, that's where you get the water Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely atrocious. It, was, it is it's, absolutely it, it, it would be like reviewing an Assassin's Creed game and then saying something like... Too much climbing. Too much climbing or, or too much killing or... or too, too much assassinating. Too much assassinating. <laughs> yeah. It's like playing Hitman and saying too many headshots. It's like playing Batman and saying too much Batman. <laughs> <laughs> too much stealth. Too much stealth. Uh, it's, uh, it's retarded. Uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely it's retarded. So, I don't know. It, it feels like saying too much water in, in the case of Pokemon is not even reviewing the gameplay in any way. Yeah. Because it's like, well, 
actually, if if I was like, I'm a die, I'm a diehard um, Pokemon fan. I'm just, like, I can't even back this up properly because I'm way pro. Like, it's a ten out of ten for me anyway. But if I was going to review the game on its gameplay basis, I would say, well, the Pokemon battles aren't buggy anymore. Unlike the previous game where there was a lot of frame drops yeah. in game, which could get le- you know, that was annoying. Um, the actual moves when they're used the animations are fucking sexy as hell <laughs> um if you're on water the surfing animation's really really good now and it's like but there's too much water no it's like well don't fucking go in the water then yeah, it's <laughs> yeah so like you just said you mentioned some really good positives with the water and the surf and yet they picked out a negative it's just yeah they nitpicking and they just find an excuses stupid yeah. excuses and yeah it's like oh, i don't even know i don't even know it's probably like 7.1 because you only give us 71 grand <laughs> instead yeah. of like 82 in yeah. that case we're giving you 8.2 <laughs> <laughs> it's like that um do you remember when the xbox one was first released and they were paying youtubers to make a video promoting the xbox one and they had to put a, like a hashtag in the video at uh, xb1 Something, something, something. I can remember it was it was absolutely retarded, and yeah, they were just paying for <laughs> paying for views and success. That's that's all it yeah. is. That's all the video games industry is these days. Yeah, especially recently. Oh, I know. When you look like I remember uh, very recently, one of the most recent games to come out, Assassin's Creed Unity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when TV did a what the fuck is on that game. Oh. I- Absolutely thrashed that game to the I was, ground. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off of that. It was, <laughs> it was it was so good, but it was just like, what have you done, Ubisoft? I just feel like um, people need to stop. It's got to a point where the gaming companies, the reviewing companies, uh, uh, there are some out there that are, that are good, that are honest still. Things like PC Gamer, which I still trust. Yeah, I mean, um, but IGN has gone so far downhill uh people like like other youtube uh, other reviewing networks have just i think gamespot's another one have just gone so far down into the oh they've given us this much money this isn't this much score like remember when um rome total war though rome 2 uh was reviewed yeah like, oh, all yeah. the reviewers all the most of the reviews companies all gave them like 9 out of t- 10 and 10 out of 10s but it's like we all played it what did they play yeah i can actually remember the ign first impressions video because they did like a quick 10 minute video before the actual full review and the two people that they had reviewing the game had never played a total war game in their life and they were saying oh i don't know what this button does i thought how can you justify reviewing a game how can you be a reviewer if you've never played like i understand that so if if you've got a new franchise which is a completely new concept out there, yeah, sure. But if you're going to do a full on review, unless it's a first impressions, you and it's like, what? <laughs> I can't even believe what you just told me. Yeah, <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs> if you're going to get, you're going to get what? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I don't understand. Like, if someone was going to say uh, to me. Review. I haven't played any of the Batman games. It's like, oh yeah, review uh, Batman Arkham City. It's like, well, I'm gonna play Batman Arkham Asylum first, then just to see what it's competing against. I'm not just gonna say, oh, it's it's good. Like when I played um, Crusader Kings 2, I did. I actually did a written review uh, for that game uh, for when I was with another with with a network back in the day. Back I did a review on their, on their website, and um, I actually compared it to other. Um, games that Paradox had done. I compared it to uh, EU3 at the time because EU4 wasn't out. So you have to have something to compare it to. You can't just say, oh, "Yeah, guys, have a have a yeah. have this game. Uh, yeah. This is a Barbie game. All right, I'll have a go." Yeah, it's like men with big penises. You know, <laughs> I I might think I got a big penis, but until I see yours, I won't know, will I? <laughs> 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 That is the best argument ever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> my point still stands, you know. This is true. <laughs> and I'm not... Be, uh, <laughs> my point still stands. That's a joke in itself. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've started. No, um, you can't really justify yeah, no, yeah, yeah. You know, a review unless you compare it to what the predecessor or something similar, yeah. 
Um, that's enough jokes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, moving, moving on. Moving on. Moving on from. Uh, so yeah. So these are reviews. I think that reviewers, when they're I think reviewing companies have gone completely downhill, especially when it comes to YouTube. And YouTube is where now a lot of the reviews are going. Um, they have their written reviews on the website, but they also have a, a review on YouTube, which is so good. But the actual YouTubers themselves, when they don't have a website back in them, like Total Biscuit, like Angry Joe, who put effort into those videos, I think have a better, not maybe not more influence on the gaming community or the gaming market, but their influence is very strong when uh, looking at their viewership and stuff. If TV says, does a what the fuck if uh, is on uh, Spartans versus Zombies Defense, which we saw on Steam yeah. today, <laughs> lol, um, and says that it's shit, then it's shit. Yeah. Like, I would totally agree yeah. with him, because he's at least going to give us footage to back up his arguments. Yeah, that's one of the things I like with him. It's like, do you see his uh, Gary's Mod uh, incident video? I, d- I didn't. I wasn't subscribed to him back then. Oh. Um, I heard about him and his uh, issues it's, with it's, the developers. Yeah, it's a really good video. Basically, he called the game out in his uh, What the Fuck Is series. He said it's shit, the animations were crap, and basically you were dying when the opponent or the other character was the other side of the screen. So they, <laughs> they were basically glitching in and killing you. Yeah. So he called them out, gave an honest review, as you would expect from Total Biscuit, and basically... The company put a copyright strike on the video because they didn't like what they heard, and yeah. because he wasn't supportive of them. And then he made a follow-up video, then slamming them. That video got a shitload of views, got, got like hundred thousand or yeah. mil- million, or I don't fucking know, loads, loads. Anyway, and um, they basically, they think they apologized four days later. And, yeah, and it's um, yeah, it's kind of yeah, it's an issue. It's an issue because you. It, it, it's part of the censorship issues that we're having at the moments with the internet and with YouTube. Because of those copyright strikes and stuff, it's bringing censorship into it. And if a developer doesn't like what they're hearing, then they're going to take it down. And it's just, it's yeah. silly. It's it's removing the whole freedom of speech thing, which is what these YouTubers are doing, really. Yeah. Giving you anyway let's move on yeah <laughs> let's stop going back to youtube and copyright and censorship uh, it's so easy to do um it is i think we can talk about the escapist uh yeah that'd probably be a good one to talk about so yahtzee we, yeah yahtzee we, we both subscribe to the escapist but i don't think either of us watch anything apart from yahtzee and the, yeah. the zero right. punctuation series which uh yeah. if you haven't watched it's fantastic he completely and at least annihilates pretty much every game that he, that he actually Reviews, reviews yeah. and we can't really call it a review. But I think uh, uh, Yahtzee, Zero Punctuation series, and Yahtzee, who is the person who does these, um, he has this way. He reviews games. He reviews, is it like one episode a week or something? Yeah, it's like every Wednesday he uploads them. Yeah, and um, what happens is that even if he likes a game, he will shit on the game. <laughs> yeah. he will absolutely fuck the game. He will say that it is. Like, like you won't you won't say that it's terrible. You won't say that. He'll say the bad things of the game or how it made him feel, which is very explicit and like it has a lot of uh, it, it has little animations in the background, which are fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um. But even if it's a good game, a game that he enjoys, he will still shit on it. Just for the sake of it. Just for the fun for of the it. Sake, because like he he what what Yahtzee does, I believe, is he's trying to level all games. Like even if a game is better than a certain game. If a game, it's not like that. It's a game is shitter than others. There is a level where games should be, and there's levels underneath it. There is nothing above. Yeah, and it's bringing <laughs> everything to a nice playing field, and it's really. I just I adore his videos. I mean, I can remember uh, last year he did a a FIFA 14 review. He basically <laughs> said, "Today we're going to be reviewing FIFA 14," and then he went completely off reviewing something else. And he came back at the end of the review. He's like, "Oh yeah, FIFA 14. Oh well, what's what's it to say? Oh, it's the same game as last year. Goodbye." <laughs> <laughs> and that was his review. He just just that the last second, and uh, it, oh, it's man, uh, it's so it's... good. I just remember. I just I just love the fact that he will shit on a game that he loves. Yeah, it's just. I just feel like um, a, a, a true. He's like a true reviewer. He's like I'm. I'm. He's he's um, he's the kind of person in teaching. I do teaching. Um, you're told to always look at the good things and never the bad things, and I feel like he does the complete opposite. <laughs> and it's just that's such a 
awesome way to do it. He gives everything a 20 out of 20 and then removes points because of certain bugs, certain things that made him feel shit and other things like that. And I just feel like that's a great way of reviewing games. Yeah. It's just, it's just some of the stuff he says, like with a Watch Dogs review. I think he said, Aidan Pierce is a trench coat wearing cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just, yeah. He is so remorseless. It's oh, so good. Yeah, I think review. I think if, if every review was like that, YouTube would be a much better place. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So me and Dragonheart both recommend that you should watch at least one episode of Zero Punctuation yeah. just to see what it's like, and you will laugh your heads off at how fucking amazing yeah. his reviewing is. I think when I first discovered that playlist, I think I sat pretty much <laughs> for five or six hours straight just in the playlist going through each video. I did that. I yeah, did that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, yeah. Looking, looking at past videos from like 2009 in uh, in 240p. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Mass Effect 2 is a real... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So, definitely recommend Zero Punctuation on the yeah. Escapist channel. Um, they... I feel like if he ever... I don't know. I don't think any developer would be able to copy strike him because he's like, well, he's shitting on our game, but he also shot on the other guy's game as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so good. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really watch the other stuff on the channel. Like no, I don't watch it. Apparently, it's I, I have a friend who watches it and says that it's it's gone so far downhill. And zero potential is really the best, the thing that only gets keeps getting better compared to the rest, which is going down to shit. Yeah, I, I did try the uh, Jim Quisition with Jim Sterling, and uh, it wasn't really my cup of tea. But yeah, I think your friend's right. It's it's crap apart from zero punctuation. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, let's move on. Let's move on to. Uh, I would like to move on to uh, Yogg's Cast versus Nerd Cubed. Okay, I have no um, knowledge on this. So now Dragonheart has no knowledge, this... and I don't. I'm not going to keep talking for 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> but basically, these two YouTubers, um, the Yogg's Cast being a YouTube group, and Nerd Cube being on his own. Plus, he has a he has a people working for his website and his uh, community and stuff. Um, but the Yogg's Cast way of doing YouTube is completely different to NerdCubed in the sense that Yogscast will usually play games that either uh, they can play together in a big group and enjoy together and they have so many different YouTube uh, members of their Yogscast so they can do a lot but a vast majority of the time um, gaming companies will use their marketing money give them to the Yogscast so that the Yogscast can promote the game this happened for Watch Dogs, this happened for Assassin's Creed, uh, and a lot of things. Nerd Cube is the complete opposite of that. He, will, he never accepts any kind of monetary fund from a gaming company. If there's a game that's featured on his channel, it's a game that he's enjoyed. It's usually an indie game. Uh, if it's not an indie game, then it's a game that he truly enjoys. Things like the Hitman series uh, on his channel, things like Deus Ex. He really, really enjoys and it's completely opposite. And I feel like YouTube is becoming split yeah. in that sense. It's becoming split between the YouTubers that do, uh, f that play games because the developers give them money from the marketing uh, portion of their budget and YouTubers that don't play those games because they'd rather play games that they enjoy. Yeah. And I feel like that is. I don't know whether that's a bad split or a good split, to be honest. No, I think only time will tell. No, um, yeah. I know, like, when you look at the Yogg's cast and stuff, they do it... I mean, it, it's a business decision-wise. It's, it's a really good business decision. Because you're getting quite a lot... You're, first, you're getting money from the developers straight off. And then you're getting money from the views on YouTube as well. And the developers thus getting some uh, money from advertising. Because they get their game sold. However, this can lead to skewed reviews, skewed uh, thoughts. So the Yogscast, who, uh, especially this happened with Assassin's Creed Unity, they basically said that the game was brilliant. Oh, right. When yeah. It was. No, it was, it was crap. And that's when TV came in, and there was a big, big clash between Yogscast and Nerdcubed um, because of this. And uh, because basically what happened is one of the Yogscast members says that... Um, Unity was amazing, and then one of Nerdcube's community managers says, "You're a cunt." 
<laughs> for saying <laughs> these types. And then they had a big fight, and then Lewis, being the head of the Ogs cast, decided to personally attack this member, and then Nurkube decided to defend it, and then TB came in to try and just sort it out. He's like, no, stop, stop. <laughs> and it's funny with that... Um, Basically, the, what the main point of the argument is that the Yorks has never explicitly said that this was paid promotion. Um, it was in their description, but it wasn't. You had to really look for it to find it. Yeah. Um, and what happened a few days after is that there was a law passed. I think it was an EU law, um, or it might have been. I, know, I think it was EU law passed to do with content that was. Uh, that that someone had paid for paid promotion basically is now has to be explicitly said um, at the beginning of the video, and what the Yorks has, has now got to do is when it's a paid promotion they have to put it on their thumbnail. Yeah. So it's like um, Assassin's Creed Unity and then paid promotion, and I thought that that was hilarious, <laughs> but I think that is something that is really really important with YouTubers and gaming yeah. in general to say that it is paid promotion to try not and skew these thoughts of games because people who bought Assassin's Creed Unity are probably crying their eyes out about how shit their purchase was. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's just, I don't know, it's something yeah. that really needs to to be sorted out, in my opinion. Yeah, that, that reminds me of something which happened recently, which also involves uh, Total Biscuit to, to a degree. Uh, when Shadow of Mordor came out, there was this uh, paid promotion by the creators of Shadow of Mordor and basically they got people to or other YouTubers to sign a contract where they explicitly said you can only say good things about this game oh yeah and yeah, yeah and Total Biscuit just completely went up the wall with them and oh, I'm not surprised made a, made a video war about it and... but it's not so the thing is um, paying there, there's two ways you can go about doing a paid promotion there's the way that Ubisoft did. I'm going to use the Assassin's Creed Unity as the example yeah. because it's the best one out there for this extreme. Mm. When the developer explicitly goes out, to say to a YouTuber, sign this contract, we'll give you whatever X amount of money if you say only good things. And they will sign it and they'll get that money and they will say only good things and people will get skewed opinions and stuff and whatever. Of course, I have to say, if the community wasn't as dumb as they are and just say, oh, well, if he says it's good, it must be good. Yeah. I will not go anywhere else to go and find this information. <laughs> no. Bad. And on the other extreme, um, have you heard of extra credits? No, never. No. They are a... Um, they're, they're a gaming kind of company. I don't know. They're a gaming YouTuber. Uh, they're a group of people who do kind of reviews but it's I don't know it's, it's a weird way of learning but they do basically um, they do a I'm trying to think of my words but I'm failing a series there we go where they do um, gaming concepts yeah so concepts of uh, RTSs of uh, horror in gaming horror genres uh, or things like aspects of gaming and they do videos on that and explain different aspects of it which is really informative like awesome mm. and um it's really, really fun to to watch and stuff, and it's really informative because it, you know, it gives you think things to think about. Um, one of these things, one of my favorite videos that I watched was uh, the aspects of mobile gaming. Yeah. And um, they basically they talk about how uh, what um, DLC was like back in the day, <laughs> and what it's like now, and what mobile gaming is now, and what it could be in the future, like stuff like that. Um, but Creative Assembly, with the release of Rome 2, had some funds in the marketing department and decided to give it to the Extra Credits dude to do a show called Extra History. Yeah. And what they said, um, what the Extra Credits people said anyway, was that Creative Assembly gave them that to, do, to talk about an aspect of Roman history, um, and they decided to do the Punic Wars. So it was five episodes of, uh, about the Punic Wars, which was really informative, really good, absolutely adored it. And they said, well, Creative Assembly came up to us, gave us this, this money, and said, yeah, just do something on the Roman Republic. You don't even have to mention that we've given you money for this. You don't have to mention our game. We just wanted uh, people to learn more about the Roman history because in their minds, if people got interested in Roman history, oh, I wonder if there's any Roman games yeah. out there. <laughs> oh, no, it's total war. So in that way, that's a really long way around. You know, That's not explicitly. And what Extra Credits did was that they said, 
Creative Assembly told us that they didn't want us to say their name out there. They didn't want us to say that Rome 2 is coming out. They just wanted us to talk about Roman history. But we're going to do that anyway because they're really nice guys. And it's like that that is the marketing the way it should be done. It's no loops, no no saying you need to say our game is amazing. Just do something outside the box. Talking about Roman history to get people interested in, in the period and then go to Rome 2, that that is a really good marketing strategy. Yeah. And it doesn't give any skewed opinions because it's got nothing to do with the game. Exactly, yes. I think you're right there. I mean, it's just a pity more things aren't like that. It's like yeah. it's like um it's like trying to get trying to make a video on say sci fi and then that video may lead to people buying, I don't know, alien isolation. Yeah, exactly. You know, things and... like or, or like um even just things on the on the lore of alien. Yeah, exactly. And it, just about it, that, or with with um with the coming of Attila, so a video on the Dark Ages. Yeah, you cut away the middleman, you cut away the bullshit, but you get the same result. Yeah, it's you know without it skewing anyone's opinion, without causing any controversy. If someone had, um, if Ubisoft instead of doing a like a straight away, oh, our game is fucking amazing and stuff. If they had done something like um, talking about the the, the French Revolution or um, conspiracies concerning around the time period, people would get interested in that and like, say, oh, you know Assassin's Creed Unity is coming out. Oh, awesome. That would be a really good way to do it. Yeah. Of course, if Assassin's Creed Unity was actually good, that would be <laughs> even better. But whatever. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like one of the things that marked me most was that Creative Assembly had money left in the marketing department. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's great that they're giving money to, to, to these people. I mean, I don't even know how they even managed to get this. They're a company and there's like yeah, extra credits. Extra credits only have like 20,000, 30,000 subscribers. That's not that big. No. It could have, they could have given their money to like Lionheart or like uh, Prince of Macedon to do stuff, which they did. They they flew them to Italy to yeah, whatever. Yeah, I remember, yeah. <laughs> Shit. But they could have just done that, but they didn't. They did something amazing. And now um, Extra History, which is on that channel, does uh, like they, they've started a, a um, patron thing and they've done the First World War and they've done, um, what else they did? And they've done the Sengoku Jedi for, Sh- for, I'm ass- <laughs> for Shogun 2. That wasn't why they did it, but, um, but they've done the Sengoku Jedi, which is the same kind of period. But the great thing is that during those videos, like they used Total War... Uh, stuff. So when they talked about clans getting destroyed, they used the faction destroyed um, screen wow. from the uh, Shogun Two Total War, yeah. which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> God, it's great. I'm gonna have to check that out. I've never seen it before. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll give you a link. Oh, we'll exchange links. <laughs> you naughty devil. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, oh, what's the time? We got about twenty minutes remaining, I think. So we've got a few more things to talk about. So as we're on the sort of topic of Total War at the moment, should we talk a little bit about the Total War Network and how that channel has affected YouTube? Yep. And gaming. And gaming. And, and, <laughs> and mostly Total War. <laughs> yeah. So um, were you a subscriber when they first started? Yeah, I was. Yeah. I, I was actually. Um, I wanted to be. I was asked to be an admin. I, um, I was as well. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I've been there since the beginning. I mean, yeah, we we've, we've both been there together. <laughs> I know, right? Hand yeah. in hand. <laughs> seen, yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be a pretty good topic to talk about because we we both uh, we both should yeah. be pretty good been, at this. Yeah. Uh, so it started off uh, around about the time of Rome 2's release, which was September 2013, and it was started by uh, Oakley High Def and Total War or uh, Legendary Vendetta. Yep. Um, basically it. It's a channel which is a community hub for, well, aimed at the smaller channels within Total War, so uh, ourselves, uh, generally. A lot of smaller lot of, ones. Yeah, a lot of other ones. Like people, people, most of the people, most of the, I think their, um, the initial idea was to bring the, t- like, because apart from the Total War Center, um, which is a, a website which has forums about Total War and stuff, on YouTube there was no such thing like that. No. There was no way that all the, Total War YouTube, uh, all, all the Total War YouTubers could be found. There's a lot of a lot of small Total War uh, YouTubers out there, and there's a lot of big ones. There's yeah. people like Lionheart, people like Prince of Basilon, Air of Carthage. They're all there, and they're people know about them. 
but no one knows about us. And the Total Network was a great way to get all these small YouTubers up and trying to get the, the people together. And when it started, when they posted their, their first uh, that trailer yeah. about it, that was when when everyone started posting that trailer on their channel. I remember doing it in mine as well. Uh, yeah. People people got aware, and it just became this place where um, channel where YouTubers could post one video. They had something called the YouTube Buffet, uh, which is still there, yeah. and where they, every every um, YouTuber has one video on the buffet, and they pick them out so people can go onto the network see that. And they also had these ideas of doing. Um, uh, a campaign where one YouTuber would play for an hour or whatever and then move on to the next YouTuber and keep doing that. And it was a great, great way of putting us all together and learning each other's names and stuff and knowing who was out there. Yeah, and um, I think it's fair to say that probably both of our channels have, have uh, benefited a great deal from yeah. from this. You know, I've got people like uh, Coda, Watcher of the Leash, you know, Spam Q Gamers that have taken part in, in the recent Nubidia Challenge and also yeah. the, the upcoming Germania Challenge. And, um, you know, they've, they've actually subscribed and we've all subscribed to each other. Yeah. I actually now watch Watcher of the Leash's videos, whereas, you know, if it hadn't been... Before, I didn't even know he existed. Exactly. You know, I wouldn't have even known. And, you know, he's a fantastic uh, battle commander in, on, a, oh, on Total. Yeah. One of the best, you know, I, I've seen on YouTube, if I'm being perfectly honest. And... Yeah, it's great. I just feel, I feel especially recently, um, I mean, the Total Network has had its up and down. It has a lot of problems. Uh, I know that Legendary Vendetta and Oakley, they've, they've got their own personal uh, things going on. And so the, the actual YouTube channel has been kind of struggling yeah. uh, to get content. But yeah. there are, because the fact that it's been divided up into admins, mm, yeah. certain admins are keeping it alive, especially recently with uh, official uh, Delvin and um, Biscuits. we've got Biscuits, yeah. of course. Uh, and I know Sanjetsu is in the background yeah. doing his own little thing. Um, the Rogue but, Empire as well, yeah. Yeah, and Rogue Empire. And they're all there trying to keep the people involved. Um, with officially Delvin's... Um, his Massalia Let's Play. He's such a brilliant narrative Let's Player. He mm. does it so well, puts so much effort into it. His videos that I've seen have constantly got over 1,500 views. Just constantly, which is something that you don't see, especially now that it's like episode 18. Yeah. It's just like, that's just something that YouTubers like me and you just dream of. And the fact that it's got this community aspect where he allows people to uh, be guest commentators and read uh, one of his paragraphs during his narrative Let's Play, that is one of one of the um, community, which is great. Yeah. And, and then with uh, this coming of the YouTube challenges, the, the, gate, the Germania challenge, the Numidia challenge, this allowed even more of the YouTubers themselves to help, to, to be, you know together and compete against one another where before it would just be like yeah i'm just doing this let's play yeah, i'm just doing this let's play here it's like we're doing this let's play to beat each other at doing this let's play yeah it's you know it, i suppose you can say and it's going to sound rather cliche this is but we've found our own little place on the internet you know yeah. we, whereas in the past we would have been lost in the pile among the lion hearts and the air of carthages and yeah. so forth whereas now we know that we're all going to watch each other's videos and we're all going to comment and like and subscribe, which, you know, it's the yeah. it's kind of standard for what everyone says in their videos on yeah, most yeah. YouTube channels. But it actually does occur with this with this channel. And I think that's one of the great um, benefits with this community. And, you know, it didn't, when it first started, it didn't really take off. I think, like you said, you know, you, you alluded to Legendary Vendetta and uh, uh, Oakley. They're doing their own channels now. I don't even think Oakley's involved, is he? No, I think I think they just have other personal things in their own lives, yeah. like work, university, other things like that. Yeah, but it's great because other... preventing them from helping. Yeah, it's great because other people have now taken up the mantle, and, yeah. and like you said, you know, you you were offered, and, and I was offered myself by by Sanjetsu a few months ago back, and I couldn't because of my own uh, my own situation. But you know, it doesn't matter. We we don't need to be admins no i mean yeah no, I mean, both of us both of us aren't admins but we're still involved we were involved in the germania challenge making sure that the idea worked and all that yeah yeah i think that's 
I so you know, that's definitely as far as we are concerned with our our kind of uh, viewer base with with Total War. It definitely has. It's been a positive. I think that's what I'm yeah, trying to say. Yeah, definitely, it's, it's been, been a positive. positive. If I would like to say another thing, one of the current uh, members of the uh, Jemena Challenge is the Wise Coffin, and I saw that he's um, he actually put on his channel a announcement trailer for a mod that he's making called uh, Rise of Persia, I think. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Um, which I think, like, this is for those of you who watch this podcast, you're about to learn something that. Being going on in my head. Um, I think for a future um, challenge, it would be good to use a mod made by someone in the community oh, to, yeah. as a basis. So using his mod, not only would that do another challenge to bring even more YouTubers in, but it all it would also give him, uh, ad, you know, some adver- advertisement for you know promotion about his mod that he's worked so hard to do, either on his own or with a little with his friends or whatever. I, I don't actually know if he's doing this on his own or whatever, but to be able to advertise his own uh, mod within a challenge which would bring the community together, just helping everyone in the process. And it's it's a whole lot of fun to do. Yeah. I mean, I have i don't think... When it comes to a series, um, it's very rare for me to be really hyped about a series. But this Germania challenge, when Watch of these put up the first video, yeah. when I finished watching it, I was just so hyped. I was like, I want more. I want more Germania challenge. I want to see what other people do. And then I just moved on to watching the other people as they slowly released it. Biscuits is the latest one I watched. And I'm just, I'm so looking forward to seeing other people playing the same thing, but so differently, mm. doing different tactics. Yeah. It's just so good. <laughs> it brings, it, it helps us learn more about the game and enjoy the game and just learn about other people and watch their videos, help them out, like their videos and help them expand. I'm pretty sure if one of us started to expand, because of these challenges and continuously saying that there's these other YouTubers out there, the subscribers that we obtain will eventually go on to them yeah. and will help them. And yeah. we all eventually help each other. Yeah, it's like the domino effect. You know, you yeah. you have a thousand subscribers for one person, say, but somebody in the challenge has, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30. Maybe they're new starting off on YouTube. But they may be a fantastic YouTuber, which, you know, their content hasn't been viewed by the masses. But yet, yeah. because they've taken part in this and they they get a little bit of a rub off somebody who perhaps does have, you know, a thousand subscribers, they might get a hundred subscribers within the space of a week. You know, and, and that's that's fantastic. And it, yeah, yeah I, I, <laughs> I can't say much more. It's just, it's just fantastic. I totally agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it's fucking awesome. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, um, two W two W two W N army. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I just had a funny idea of making a rap video just for the T W N. Because that will be there. Do they even have a um an in a uh, channel trailer? Um, they haven't got a new one. I know that in, in the Steam group it does say put our channel put our channel trailer in your trailer on. On your channel, but that's that's like an old message from. Yeah, that's a pretty old message. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I really enjoyed when I made the trailer for the Germania challenge. I really enjoyed making that. Absolutely, just just not not only because it wasn't because it wasn't for my channel, and I didn't mind that it wasn't for my channel. It was going to be for the TWN and for the whole like community. Yeah, and I feel that being able to to touch upon the, the Total War community in some small way is really... I don't know, it makes me feel good. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay, so that's TWN. So we've got a couple yeah. more things to talk about before we finish off. Um, the first thing is the Enigma, that is PewDiePie. Yeah. I think we do have to mention him because he is the biggest YouTuber out there. He's the biggest YouTuber and the biggest gaming YouTuber as well. Yeah. Um, I'm subscribed to him. And I used to watch quite a lot of his content probably about two years ago. Uh, I think I think two years ago he wasn't the biggest. I think he was like the third or fourth biggest. But yeah. I think it was Smosh that used to be the biggest and he over, overtook them. Yep. Anyway, I loved his content. I really enjoyed his, uh, his Last of Us Let's Play. I liked his Beyond Two Souls Let's Play and his Telltale game. So The Walking Dead, Wolf Among Us. But I don't know, the last kind of year or so... I find that he's gone really stale and it's the same thing over again and there's only so many kind of rape jokes and and uh, <laughs> pie and, and you know do you know what I mean it's the same yeah it's the same 
I think with you know when you watch something and it's a good series, I'm on my television now. After a while, it gets stale, but they might they might kill off a character or they might change the storyline or something, yeah. and it makes it really interesting and engaging. It's like, oh yeah. my god, there's a killer in the street or something like that. Yeah. Whereas I feel like with PewDiePie, he hasn't quite got that killer yet or, or anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like it's there because um, I'm watching Breaking Bad. Oh, good series. Kind of. Yeah, exactly. And um, and I right now I'm like uh, on the uh end of season three and really like so much things change so fast that it keeps everything new yeah and it's the same as game of thrones game of thrones like it's very like there are episodes in the middle of the seasons which get kind of stale because nothing happens because these people are getting no one's getting killed yeah um but even then they're still fucking amazing episodes like a lot of people say they're still i personally enjoy every episode I mean. and uh, even if they're still it's backstory that we're getting and things that could be important later on mm, yeah and oh my god when when something happens in game of thrones <laughs> you just feel it and it becomes so new and everyone looking forward to the new season coming out soon yeah i like GM. i like how i like how we went from pewdiepie to breaking bad to game of thrones <laughs> what, a, what a jump that was um any yeah. any kind of... yeah no PewDiePie is a bit stale in my opinion I, yeah. I the only the only real video that I really enjoyed from him was his montage video when he took a fuckload of videos and put them together yeah. in a montage and I feel like that's I feel like he's reached his peak he will always be and well not always but for a very long time he's going to be the biggest YouTuber because a lot of people are not going to click the unsubscribe button no because people don't do that that's just rude <laughs> the mad thing is like he's got i think he's got 35 million subscribers oh god has it gone up <laughs> yeah it's gone up to, to about that much jesus um but channels have inactive subscribers yeah so can you imagine how many inactive subscribers he probably has people who either don't have that actual account anymore or have had accounts banned yeah if he's had 35 million the thing is youtube um or google i should say periodically uh, they do this every year. They take, they kill off, they kill off, kill off. Uh, <laughs> accounts that uh, <laughs> they do a Game of Thrones and kill off people. No, um, they 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 take down accounts that are inactive for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, however, this very long time is something like three, four years. Yeah. So it could be a while before we see that happening. Yeah, there is also the fact that people have subscribed to him but don't watch his videos. People like you. Yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> you're subscribed, but you don't actually watch his videos. I've got that with a few um, yeah. uh, YouTubers. Um, not a lot. Like I'm subscribed to a lot of people, but the thing is, they don't put content up rather than the other way around. Yeah. And it could be that sometimes I'm subscribed to someone just because of one series. People like um, The Escapist. Yeah, same as me. It's because I watch Zero Punctuation, and that's it. Yeah. So mm, it could be that right now he's got a series going on that one person's that people are watching, but his other series aren't oh. that good. Yeah. It has to be said though, he's probably the biggest influence on gaming on I YouTube. Think, definitely. Mm. The fact that the biggest YouTuber is a gaming YouTuber is amazing for the industry. Yeah, it is. I think his rise to fame helped gaming so much. Not not maybe not gaming, but YouTubers, gaming YouTubers, they helped them so much. Like it, it made. The whole um, industry out there, the whole gaming industry, and the whole industry of advertising in, in general, really take gaming seriously. It's like, oh, actually, it's a really, really big market. Yeah. Yeah. So there we are. That's PewDiePie. Um, I think to finish off, we're probably going to talk talk a little bit about our favorite YouTubers. So, yep. Do you want to start? Yeah. Um, we've listed some of them in this podcast already. Uh one of the ones we have mentioned is uh, Lionheart. Uh, he was probably one of the biggest inspirations for me to start my own channel. Um, when I was when I was in university a few years ago, my I didn't have a PC. My PC was broken basically. I had a shitty laptop, which it would run Rome and it would run <laughs> Medieval Two. But it would overheat, so after like an hour or so of play, I had, I had to stop. Reminds me of my laptop. Yeah, I know. I knew, <laughs> I knew we were going to say that. But I couldn't play Empire. And at the time, I really wanted to play Empire and Napoleon. So I actually got into his channel by watching his Let's Plays. And I think I was one of his earliest subscribers on my, off my old account. Um, I, I think it was like his, in his first 2000 or something like that. 
Um, of course, he has like over, I guess, like over 110,000 now, so in some ridiculous number like that. Yeah, um, but he for to- he's, he's got really big because of. I think Creative Assembly has really helped him. Oh, definitely. I think with the with the flow. I think they, it's because it's because he's um, he's UK based compared to the Prince of Masson who yeah, isn't. Yeah, I, I was just about to say. I think it's because he's UK based because he is actually the biggest UK Total War player yeah. now. I think he has been. I think he's one of the. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think definitely. I think no, yeah, I think he is. I think it's, I think I it, think the Rambler is also slightly hyping up on him, it's like, oh, guys, I'm also because <laughs> I mean, Rambler got an Attila code. Yeah, I know, and Warrior Sparta. Yeah, so you know, I think I think Creative Assembly is really helping YouTubers out there. They're really like YouTube is one of the big things. Like when they look at their marketing, it's like marketing strategies. We're gonna have. Uh, Adverts. We're gonna have YouTubers. They can be a big one. Uh, gonna, it's like, oh, great! Yeah. Yay, we're actually a big one. <laughs> yeah. So, Creative Assembly, uh, Will and Craig, if you're watching this, please send us codes to Attila. We promise. <laughs> we promise we won't say bad I things. I can't say it yet, <laughs> but don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mister No Laptop. <laughs> I have a laptop, just not a working one. No. Um, I can't remember what I was gonna say. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, so Lionheart was like the main one for Total War, and that's how I sort of got into his. Another one which I haven't mentioned, I don't think I've mentioned it to you either, is The Reformist. Um, do, have you ever heard of him? Never heard of him. He does really, really good Mountain Blade Warband videos. Um, he, pl- he literally plays every single mod. He plays native, and he has... plays all of it. He plays all of it. But one of the reasons, and this is going to sound a bit peculiar, but one of the reasons why I actually like him is because he's actually got a social anxiety disorder and he admitted this in one of his vlogs he actually finds it difficult to to actually leave his home and he oh, and he lives in london as well he, he has trouble walking through crowds but he's actually set up this youtube channel he has fantastic commentary he he sounds how can i put it he sounds like a some sort of old war veteran you know um, <laughs> hello we will fight them on the beaches and we will you know he's got this very kind of um <laughs> Very kind of sarcastic, uh, crude kind of uh, British wit in his commentary, which is really interesting. But it's the fact that he's overcome this kind of social disorder and actually interacts with the yeah. subscribers, which is which is one of the reasons why I like him. I think he's I think he's got like fifty thousand subscribers, and he only wow. started I think eight months ago. He's just grown. He's just blown up yeah. completely on the kind of mountain blade side of things. So he's another one which is one of my my favorite Let's Players. Uh, what about you? What are your favorites? Wow. Well, uh, whilst you were talking, I was making a little list. Oh, <laughs> um, homework. So, help you. so um, people we've talked about, Nerd Cubed. The thing is about Nerd Cubed is that his videos, in my opinion, have kind of because he he's he kind of wants to go his own way, like not really following the the norm yeah. of how things go, which is a really good thing. Like I respect him immensely for doing that because he's doing what he enjoys. However, I feel like because of it, his content has kind of suffered. Yeah. He's still a big... I still fucking... like He's still one of my top YouTubers, and I still love his content. But I will, I'm watching less of his content because of it. He's kind of got... Like, if he puts out a NerdQ Plays, which is one which he's edited, he's taken a long time to make it work and do these funny jokes and stuff, I will watch that because that is his best series, in my opinion. Yeah. And he does do videos out there that are really good. But I think a lot of his videos, things like uh, NerdCube's FW... I don't know what... No one knows what FW stands for. Um, <laughs> but um, he basically will pick a game and play it just with no editing, nothing, which is how most people play. But it's not even a let's play. It's a one-off video. So it's kind of really strange, yeah. in my opinion. I don't like watching those videos of him. But it's So it's really weird. Um, but yeah, so we've also got extra credits, which is... I, I obviously I'm going to link them to you, okay. but they are so good. I think everyone should check them out because they really give you a, an informative view on the gaming industry yeah. as a whole and a lot of things to think about. Because they don't tell you what to think; they give you the pointers so you can think about it yourself, which I think is really important. Um, we have the Rambler, of course. Oh yeah, of course, um, yeah. great guy. Yeah, I love him. Um, he's so funny. His um, his his review of. Attila, <laughs> 15 seconds, yeah. is the best video of the year so far. Yeah, it it's is. It's so good. I think everyone should check that out because it is so funny. Um, Yogscast Sips, one of my favorite YouTubers. He's he's just fucking amazing as well. Uh, Angry Joe. Oh, yeah, definitely. Hef, yeah. Hef, yeah. Um, Hef is a really good oh. Mountain Blade player. Yeah. Um, he plays a lot of mods as well. And he's just he's a great guy as well. He's really friendly, really good. Yeah. Um, Watcher of the Leech recently. Yeah, we mentioned him, yeah. Fantastic. He's, he's so good in battle. Like 
I would not like to face him no. in battle. <laughs> you, he's really you know, good. okay, this is going to be a joke. You know when you go to the men's toilets, right? And, you know, you have a quick look, don't you? you, know, you <laughs> well, I have a quick look at him and I feel inferior. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, uh, I move. I move away. Yeah. I go into uh, one of the yeah. uh, cabinets instead. Yeah, so watch of Leech, if you're watching this, me and... Me and Rex think you've got a massive penis. Yeah, we're, we're like... We've got penis envy. We, we are your biggest fans. <laughs> and uh, not not in the dick department. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> um, and finally, I think one of my favourite YouTubers, and I think everyone should be subscribed to him, is Dragonheart. Oh. Yeah. I think his uh, his Wales campaign right now is fucking great. <laughs> oh, you're, you're a cutie. You're a cutie. <laughs> um, yeah, I, no, but to be fair, your videos are fucking great. Oh, thank you. They're really, really... You put a lot of effort into them. Although your audio it's, still needs to be fixed. It's, it's As of part 10, is sorted, okay? <laughs> All right. I did have a couple of comments, I noticed. I didn't actually... <laughs> I didn't actually notice that until... Because I could hear the music in my headphones, yet I didn't realise that it wouldn't come out in the recording. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it should be... It's, it's fixed as of part 10. <laughs> because I get the point, like, when, when, I li- when I watch your videos at the moment, your Wales videos, I have to increase my volume. So I finish watching it, everything's fine. And then I move on to the next one, and then my speakers just destroy my head. <laughs> because I've had to increase my volume and forgot to put it down. Yeah, I know. I've had a bit of inconsistency with the sound. Since I swapped over from the headset to the Blue Yeti, some of the, yeah. some of the audio leveling has taken me a few, a few attempts. Yeah, well, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's something you get eventually. I mean, it took me a while to get my headset fully functioning. I also, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you know, go without saying this. Also, check out Lord Rex or so. <laughs> I mean, the poor bastard. Go check out my channel, the, guys. The poor bastard. No, in, in all honesty, in all honesty, um, I'm because I'm in between laptops right now. Um, a lot. My content isn't going to be coming until about mid Feb, uh, March time, while I get my new laptop sorted out. Yeah. So, if you are sub- going to subscribe, you have been warned. <laughs> Yeah, but they can still uh, check out your older videos. I mean, yeah, that's true. My older videos yeah, are still there. Really and good... there is there is Medal of Honor content coming. Um, if I can finally bloody render it, yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Um, so there is stuff coming. It's just going to come really slowly because um, the thing is, my laptop is suffering of cancer. <laughs> I think I'm going to start a hashtag on Twitter: Pray for Rex's old laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Save Matilda. Save Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I think I think we're getting to the point now. We'll be better. We're gonna close this uh, podcast. So, um, what's uh, what have we got for next week? What's the uh, license games? License games, yeah. So, guys, the guys that are watching, thank you for watching this. Next week's topic is license games. We appreciate your feedback in the uh, comment section below. Uh, as always, in the description, Rexosaur's link to his channel will be there. Definitely check him out. Uh, he's he's pretty okay, in my opinion. You know, <laughs> he's all right. <laughs> he's all right. Um, and of course, if you missed the previous episode, both of us have uh, playlists on our channels as well. But anyway, guys, I've been Dragonheart, and I've been joined by Rexasaur. And we'll see. Rawr. And we'll see. <laughs> and we'll see you again. Thank you for watching. Goodbye for now. See ya.